Hi there and thanks for watching and so happy you're here again. Last time I showed you my flip through of my brand new travel art journal. Today we're going to talk about drying flowers and using them in your book on the pages of your book. And also I will give you a tutorial how to do that. So I will not only show you some of my pages where I've already done that, I will also give you a tutorial. So please make sure you watch it till the end. First, I want to say thanks, Deborah from Indiana, for your donation. It's very generous of you and we really appreciate that. So thanks so much and I hope you will enjoy this video again. Now I show you some pages where I used dried flowers. So let's have a look at these. This is my travel journal from Spain this year and I added some flowers just to decorate and what I what I really like to do is when I'm traveling is collecting flowers from a specific place like here I found this well I think it's kind of a seaweed thing and this is the sea where I found that so that's a great well memory about a place this is from a very dry place and I really love the shape of the flowers and I gave a little water to those flowers and the next day they looked like this. So I thought they were dead, but they looked like this. So that's a very funny memory about this place. And I also added a kind of flower shape. It's from an old dress. Uh, so it's funny to connect things. And this is, I think we found this one at the garden, in the garden of Anthony's sister who lives in Spain. So that's just one example how to use flowers. When you have a lovely day, look for flowers and you can keep that as a memory in your art journal. In this art journal, you see I added a flower that's really matching the rest of the page color-wise. And also here I put a flower that's also matching the page and I finish off with adding the flowers as a kind of finishing touch because when you do it earlier it's possible that you have to overlap it because you're not figured out the composition yet so I do it at the very end when I finish off a page. On this page you see some flowers that I plucked from a bouquet or a kind of garden plant that I uh, saw uh, on the table from our friend Anna Marie and the funny thing is I um, plucked them and I immediately pasted them in the art journal so no drying the other flowers in the other books um, were dry and these ones you can see it this was well this was kind of their color uh, I think much brighter even than these ones here. Uh, it was a kind of in between orange and pink. You see what happened to the color. For me, it was no problem at all because it's still matching the background. But if you use flowers right away, there is a risk of fading colors. It doesn't happen always, but most of the time they fade. So if you want to be sure about the color, uh, keep in mind, first dry them and then you know what the color will be after. Well, it could be a couple of weeks, it could be a year, depending on how sure you want to be of the color. But in this case, I really love those tiny flowers and the brighter ones here. There are endless possibilities using flowers and in this case, I used some uh, Alstomeria flowers, uh, the leaves, just the petals. Uh, in, this case, in this case, I used Alstomeria flowers, just the petals, and I created dancing women out of those. I also used this Ginkgo leaf. It's very nice for a dress. So it's a very nice thing just to create something out of the leaves you've collected. And here you can see it's a kind of, well, not that good cut out, but I wanted to show one woman and I wanted to show the full flower of the Alstroemeria. 
And here you can see a mandala from the tulip leaves that I collected for, from a bunch of flowers. In the middle is a hortensia flower. And I think this is fabric. And I, here I created some smaller ones. These ones have really faded. Although I dried them for a couple of weeks, not that long, but they became all brown. I still like it, but it was much brighter when I started with this page. I think these were purple. Um, I don't know the colors anymore. I think I don't have a photograph of that too, but this is really, this has really faded. So really pay attention to that if you want to dry flowers. And now I will show you some pages in my travel art journal of this year where I used a lot of dry flowers that we found along the road. In my brand new book that's almost finished, I used a lot of dried flowers and I really enjoyed plucking them. And I always take care, I pay attention how many are there. Because if there's just one flower or I know that it's, well, from someone's garden or it's rare, I know that it's rare, then I don't pluck. But when I see many of it, I can, well, I feel free enough to pluck. This one I incorporated and I just copied because I just had one of these ones. Here I dried, uh, I used another dried leaf and of course I dried some lavender. I will browse through the book and look if I have more dried flowers. I bet there are more dried flowers in the book. Um, dried Honesty. Let's see what we have more. Um, here we have a dried leaf. Um, here is a rose leaf. And here is a small, I think this is Hortensia, again, Honesty. So I used many leaves and flower petals in this, in this, on these pages. Um, it's really fun to do. Here, some dried grass, dried leaves and printed leaves. Let's see what we have more. Here is the Forget-Me-Not and the page is about Forget-Me-Not and here's the lyrics for a song that I wrote. Dried Lavender again, so I think that's pretty it. The butterfly page, no. Um, no, I think this is it. We're ending with this page and this is also kind of the color that I want to work with today. So I will leave this page open. If you want to dry flowers, there are some methods to do it and some things to think about. So let's talk about drying your flowers. Now I am going to tell you some things where you could think about when plucking flowers. As I said, keep in mind that some flowers are rare, pluck them just when there are enough of those. So we had a big plant of Hortensia at Anna Marie's house, so I could pluck some of these. I also have these dried ones. Well, they are dried, but these ones are not that easy to dry anymore. So that's something you can keep in mind too. This is already going well to, to, to dry up and then they're going to curl and it's, it's quite hard because they easily break when you keep them in this way, but that was not the purpose. I wanted to keep them in this phase. So this, for this project, it's perfectly fine. But when using them in your art journal, it's very important that directly after plucking, you put them in a book or I will show some options later on. Another thing you have to think about is some flowers lose their color. Even those ones, they were much brighter than they are right now. I don't think they will fade much more, but I'm not sure. So if I want exactly those colors, then I have to keep that in mind that they will fade maybe. 
When you dry flowers, it's very good to have them flat in a book. So, for example, when you dry flowers like these, they're in a pot, but I will pluck one so I can show you how to do it. Um, this one is very thick, so there's still moist in it, so what, what I normally do when there's moist in it, I simply take a kitchen towel or two, in this case, I think I can do it with one, and I fold it, I put the flower between, and I press it gently. Of course, you could also dry it like this, then you get it from the side, and you will get a total different flower. And another option is, hmm, another option is, of course, to uh, pluck all the um, petals and do something like mandala things and then you don't have to well then you don't have to worry about the thickness of this so put it down press it the way you want it to have and cover it with another or the same when it's large enough press the stalk a little and then well, I don't know what it's going to be, but kitchen towel is okay. You could also put it in a newspaper. So these are ways to dry it, where you can dry it in. Um, these are all methods that I use. So you can put it in between a newspaper and then cover it with a pile of books, for example. Put something heavy upon it, no matter what. Not your grandma, because she will move. <laughs> but this is an option. And another option is to put it already in a book. This one is quite thick, so I don't know if it's okay. But again, put something heavy on it. And then you can, uh, well, wait for a couple of weeks. And especially when you have this kind of pages, uh, with no glossy pages, you could also do it directly in your book. For this one, for example, it's oh, the book is too small, but for this one, it's totally okay. I think maybe this one will leave some yellow or well, give will will give a bit of a mess in your book. So it's better to put it in between paper. When you have uh, a book with glossy pages like this one which is a very exciting book about the secret life of colors. And it's a very nice book about all kind of colors and their background, their history. I found it very exciting to read. But in this case, glossy pages, just put it into other paper. Newspaper, kitchen towels are, for this one, maybe not enough because the flower will just get damage when you put it in glossy pages. The best option I found out is to use a flower press or a Blumenpress in German or Press à Fleur in French or a Blumenpress in het Nederlands in Dutch. You simply remove these let's see what we have here and I find it always very surprising to see what I put in I forget often what I put in look what we have and also here I just take took some random book pages and sometimes I wrote down where I find the where I found the flowers. I think these are tulip leaves. This one is really fantastic. I think this was still in the press when um, Saskia gave this to me, and I'm very, very, very happy with it, and I use it a lot. And I often forget that I have it. And here, I think this is 
I don't know what it is. Sometimes I write down what it is, but I haven't seen that so far. Oh, yeah, this is uh, an example of a flower that is not, well, it's not dried properly. Um, it's folded, so you don't see the exact shape of it anymore. So, hmm, it's not the best one. Um, let's go to the next. Oh, hope, hope, hope. It's in kitchen towel. Oh, what's that? Some leaves. Oh, I like this one too. There's still something left of the colors, especially there and more at the edge. It's, well, it's faded. Maybe it's because of the light or book pages. Oh, some more, I think, tulip leaves. Oh, here. This is... Oh, Frasia. Frasia. I think it's the same in English. And then I put the date. Oh, where I, when I plucked it. This is um, uh, wild garlic. And that one is a bit brown. But it's still nice. It's from the side. I think I have it also from above. But that's very nice. And I also wrote down that I was with Saskia, another Sask Saskia from than the one from the flower press, but this is a friend of mine. And these are the same hortensia leaves from the same plant that are here. So these ones are from last year and these ones are new. So you see the color, well, it, it really, that's, that plant is having so many colors at the same time. So. I can't remember uh, which one these were, but you see it's not really changing. And this is from the mimosa tree in Spain. So that's very special that I have that. And it's it was a very, well, thick flower with big flowers on it. And you see it's pretty flat right now, but maybe not flat enough to use in an art journal. But these are my examples that I have dried. It was really surprising. So I will put now this flower that Julius gave to us when we were back home from our adventure. I will put it in. You don't necessarily have to buy something like this. Uh, although it's very great to use it's easy to make yourself because you just need two wooden panels and with four get four holes in it and then in the middle there are pieces of uh, cardboard and you can simply add newspaper um, pages or old book pages in between to dry your flowers or kitchen towel whatever you want and then you have to close it but you could even close it with duct tape or other kinds of tape or an elastic band and of course you could also use uh well heavy things to well get it even more pressed And mine isn't complete. I miss one of these. So what I could do is just put this around it and then it works the same way. Let's go to the tutorial. I'm going to work on this spread. So these are my dried flowers for now to work with. And it's a fern. I don't know what these are. Uh, can't see it anymore. Um, but I really love those uh, longer ones. This is, I think, a kind of a wild flower. And here I have my hortensia leaves. And I have, I think this is a birch leaf. But that's not really in good condition, so I won't think I be using that. So purple will be my main color. 
and I found this little book from that I created from plants in my garden and I think this will be the perfect color palette well for right now I also love this piece uh, that I created uh, when I was hosting the retreat well and especially this one I combined a bit with pink but I think this will be a kind of my guideline so blue green I don't think I will be using the craft color this time I feel like I want to have some lighter work with just maybe a bit of paints gray um, pale olive like color and then combined with the purple and well there will be some white in it as well I also have some fabrics here's also that pale olive color and I really well I really felt this matched with this would match with my um, hortensia leaves and I here I have some other stuff like a pattern some well papers from magazines this is really a cool item this is just a baby towel or something and I cleaned my my roller with that like this so I think this will be a nice thing too but what's very important to me is that the lavender stands out so I don't know if I'm going to be using that ah, the mini golf score maybe if we go for green but this is I think this is the heart the heart too hard too bright just like this and here I have some nice papers I think I won't be using this it's just too brown for now but this one is really cool I also love this one but I I, I don't have anything from that color anymore so this is going to be my project I wanted to say one more thing about drying your flowers when you're walking it's not very usual that you have a flower press or a thick book with you in your bag but this is something I have always in my bag this is a kind of ID book for putting down IDs for lessons or putting down doodles or songs or simple IDs and this is where I sometimes draw but this is also a book where I dry some flowers so I can put it out right now because the book is almost full and maybe that's something to use and it's a very simple way to dry flowers it's quite small but if you see tiny flowers that you want to have like this one it's also a nice one for now so I put it in my box carefully this is also a nice one and sometimes I forget and then they fall out of the book this is a really nice one but I can't get it out anymore so I have to do something with the paper as well and I think I now go for purple and not a fern and I go for purple instead of uh, using using pink this is more like brownish pink uh, these are one of my favorites so maybe I include that too because it's a nice color here I have a poppy and here you can see that it's um, well it's it's having it's bleeding a bit uh, this is the the moist that's coming out of the flower the heart of the flower is quite thick so this is what's happening and I saw a face in that so that's also a funny detail and this is something to use for later on maybe for another page because this really belongs in my travel art journal and you see these are the colors that I've been working with on this page they are quite similar but I want to add this kind of green to it so I think something in between this and that so I'm going to start with creating a background and I wanted to do that on this page because this is always a landscape page for me and here I can already see that um, the same color is coming back but then combined with pink so I will not really go too far away from this one when I'm working on this page I 
I have some titanium white, pale olive, pulchre green, paint gray and burnt umber. And for some purple effects I have in my box still some kind of indigo, Prussian blue. And this is a very nice one. This is light um, grayish blue or something. Uh, it's a bluish gray light and this is one of my favorites at the moment. I don't know if I'm going to be using it because there will be not really light blue in it but maybe I can mix it with the pale um, the pale olive and um, I think I want to have some buff titanium as well because I know that the color combination Pale Olive and Buff Titanium is a very good one. I already see a kind of flower shape here, but I will overlap that because I don't want to have that in my book. And... Well, let's have a look what happens if I put some random colors in between like the paints gray and this is uh, by the way um, a wallpaper roller so this is a roller that you can use for um, well putting your wallpaper together when it's like this you can put you can press it and then it gets on the seams so it's um, not to find it's to find in the hardware store and i find it a very nice object but unfortunately it isn't easily available in the united states and i think you don't use wallpaper or so i don't know why but it isn't uh, it is hard to find so you could also for the same effect you could use um ink prayer that's the same pretty pretty much the same effect I um, repeat some colors that are on the left page and you see the effect is amazing when you work on this kind of canvas. And I think it's also because there's something underneath, oh no, there's not really much underneath, and you see I have a kind of a continuing story colorized because this is just something I set up for a, a workshop last Saturday in my studio and I had to show the people how to work with the roller and then I used uh, I used my art journal so that's something I have to finish still but and as this is uh, um, already having a kind of creamy color I don't want to do too much on that page right now because I think if I add simply this detail it would be enough for me to to well to work with it but thing that I would do now is in my first phase I always say I don't want to see any white especially on this page as I said this one is okay for me to leave it a bit creamy for keeping it calm and keeping that as a kind of second basic color in mind. Now let's see if I have my favorite brush. This one, uh, sometimes it's bleeding through the page. So you have to keep that in mind. If you want something totally different on this page, you can uh, put uh, something in between then at least it won't go to this page but on the back it can be visible and especially when you use very watery paint like this you see hmm, I don't see it it will bleed through maybe a little but I don't mind it that much I just wanted to see and to show you how it works out when you look at the back but nothing really happens so it's okay 
Now I try to get back to the same color as that I have here. And some people use tape for, well, if they want this page not to be painted, but I think I will be neat enough to do it like this. And I don't mind that there's a bit of paint on the right page as well. It's okay for me. And I try to keep it simple just with the, the little cards that I've been showing you. It's so simple, just a pattern and next to it a kind of plant shape. And I want to be the plants, the hortensia leaves. I want them to be my main shape, my eye catchers. So I think it would be great if I create a surrounding that is not too, well, too wild, too dominant. Bit of paint gray. And maybe I have to make this part a little larger so I can simply add some leaves, some petals there. And I simply remove all the white that's still on the page. By the way, uh, we have a discount at the moment going on for my first art journal class, Introduction to Art Journaling, and I will put the link below. But you can also click here to go to my school, and then you get a 20% discount. So usually the course is $35 or Euro. And now it is available for $28 or Euro. And if you follow a next course, then you get 10% discount on any course you choose. So that's a fun thing and uh, what I also have in my in one of my classes is the art journal course discoveries and in that one you really look for things in your surroundings so you look for flowers you look for whatever you well where you are you can grab things like flowers and uh, it's a really nice one, especially when you're going on holiday. I think holiday season is almost over, but maybe some of you still are about to go somewhere. But you can also do it just close to your home. Have a nice walk in the park and see what you stumble upon and use that for your art journal. I'm now just overlapping some messy paint rests i think this is coming from when i was creating this i don't know but i don't want them in so i simply overlap them and i think normally i leave it for well half an hour and i think i will take the hair dryer To just to uh, oh I like this I don't know why but I like it I really love this so I think there will be something it, I like the composition it's very quiet it's very like there's not really much happening but it's balanced and it's for me, it's a very easy way to use a um, vertical composition. It's really having, giving your eyes some rests and easy way to, to look at the page. And I could also do something vertical on this page. But first, I want to see how it's working out with those patterns that I have there. Now that I'm done with the roller i'm done with using it and uh, i will clean it and now you will see that maybe on this one already has some nice 
paint, no, I need more water to do that. So this time, unfortunately, no kitchen towel for me. Um, I will add some, I think this pattern will be wonderful here. And I could have a simpler one maybe here or there. And then my composition is quite ready. And I really love it that there's a kind of shape here. That could be, well, a stalk or something. So I won't overlap that. I also love this. I, I don't know how this uh, came. Don't know what's the cause, but I love this really much. But I think I'm not going to use it as my background is already very vibrant and it's okay. And then we got this one. I'm just trying to see. This is too dominant, I think. I'd love to use it, but I really want to go for my... Oh, kind of calming patterns. This one is also lovely and it's exactly the same color as the petals. But still, I find it too dominant. Maybe I could use just a small part of it. Just for like here or something. Maybe that's a nice idea, but I will decide that later on. For now... The flowers need to be my focus point. Mm, 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 mm. This is too green. Or maybe I could add some of the blue paper because I think the flowers stand out a bit more. Let's see what happens. Here you can see the difference, by the way. These are uh, all dry uh, in a flat way and this is something coming out of my dried bunch of flowers that I earlier showed you um, so I think I'm still I still can use this one it looks like it's not breaking when when I will um, put it in yeah so this is the brightest one I think and I think already these ones are standing out a lot on the white background. And then not that much on paints gray. So I think when I do it, when I place it here, the contrast won't be that big. So I could, I'd rather put it here. And let's see how it looks like if I place them vertically oh there's some paint on it looks like there's some paint on it but I don't mind Maybe I find that too boring. I want to do something more with it. I don't know what yet, but I want to do something more. And these are Bell Campion. Um, this could be wonderful if I place it like here, mm, but I could also do it here. I really love that. So I think I, I will be doing that. Uh, the ferns, I think the ferns are too, well, bright green. And I used them before, so I don't know if I'm will be using them right now. This is a white flower and maybe that will be nice if I put it here. And then we'll see what we'll do next with the with these ones. Mm. 
it's like it's turning around uh, the, the dots that are already created. So it's, uh, I think those things aren't coincidence. It's just like I'm creating something and there's something matching with that. It's part of the process. I think these ones, I like them when they're just some of them. Maybe here and maybe there. And I think there will be enough. And maybe there's something purple missing on the page that I still can add with maybe a pattern or something. But first, let me see. If I add a pattern, for example, here, would it be good for here? Maybe I want to do it here. And what I often do is uh, tear it and then I put the right side above. So you see it when I do it. The other way around, there's a, a little yellow from the book coming through at the edge. So, hmm, there's still something on it. Oh. Maybe that's too much already, but this is very thick paper and what's happening with very thick paper I don't really like it when it's too thick and it's containing more layers now you see very clearly what happens when I'm tearing it the, the right side is above and this side will be having a white edge and in some case, cases that's just fine but in this case, I don't like it and I want to have it, well, I want to remove it. I could cut another line here, but what I could do is this is very thick paper and I will tear it off. So this is two layers, probably, uh, I think these are two layers. Sometimes there are three layers even, but this, in this case, I have two layers and so I start having a thinner piece of paper and then I removed the white not everything so I will tear this off because it's thin enough to use and it sometimes doesn't matter that it's that it's thicker But my art journal is already thick enough. So you see that this is really nice to have it on this page. I could even turn it around because then I like the shape even better. Um, then I always check this is kind of half of a pattern. So I will remove that. This one is a bit more than a half. So... I don't really feel like it's not working. So now I take my gel medium. So I always think of a composition first and I never, the flowers are almost never my starting point and in this case I really had to think about them because this is the theme of the video so I had to keep them in mind I have to put flowers somewhere but most of the time I just see if there's enough space for those and if they really matching and in line with the page that I create and um, yeah I think I really love this and the things that I am sure of, I will now put in my journal. I go glue them down. This is a kind of a messy part. So I will 
also and you can also see that the patterns are very in line they are all with round shapes dots and lines between uh, between those here it's between and here is well lines with circles upon it so I really love it that it's different in size and then this is not exactly the same color but I really love it that's a kind of dimmed version of the background and here is a large empty space but I think it's okay because for now at least it's okay because uh, then your eyes have a place to rest and the flowers have more attention and so The gel medium is uh, drying transparently. Uh, at least when you put, don't put too much on the glue, uh, on uh, too much glue on it. When you have thick white things, then, then well, it is possible that that it will dry up white. Now I have to be very careful because. I don't want it to be don't want it to be too thick. What I also do is cover it with glue. Why I do that? It's a kind of varnish so the flowers will stay how they are right now. I really love it that something is coming out of the paints gray um line here um area. And I think this is a quiet page. It's very calming to look at. It could have more, but I will at least glue this one down. Oh, yeah, sometimes that's happening as well. This is a bit too dark. So, and I really wanted to say that I love your comments uh, to the videos, to my last video. They were really great and it really supports me. It's much appreciated. And I also see the same um, in my classrooms in the online community at Brave Art Academy. It's a wonderful community. People really support each other and ask the questions. They feel free to share the results. So once you um, you followed an online class in my school, you can uh, be part of one of the groups, depending on what uh, group you have joined. Uh, what, which class you have joined. So that's really wonderful. Uh, so if you want to share your results, it's possible. And of course, if you haven't purchased any class yet, you could also consider uh, sending me an email and share the results just with me if you want that. And my email is in the description. So maybe it would be nice looking at this page if i just do something with purple and i've been searching for purple paper but i couldn't find any so i have to do something with book pages or something fabric maybe no hmm
this could be very nice to add this one somewhere it's not really having a lot of contrast but i think it could be nice to put it somewhere like here um, because then you have also already the vertical shapes of the stalks i think that would be nice here i have another one which could be nice here but i think it's a little too much already maybe it's better to do it here mm -hmm. oh this is very nice sometimes i'm very grateful that i have a cameraman who is giving advice how to do such things I think he could do a painting video as well where he sometimes I say can we change for a day then I sit behind the camera and you do the artwork but he doesn't want that unfortunately then you could see his face and then you could see how what an amazing artist he is I think he he doesn't know that himself that he really can create lovely art because he's photographer right and then you have already the vision and the ideas but no so please let me know if you want to have Anthony creating a video for you and creating a painting for you maybe and then we consider it is another hidden question. Oh, we, we didn't have a hidden question. Okay, that's the hidden question of this week. Do you want to have Anthony? And if there are more people, more than 50 people answering this question with a yes, then definitely Anthony will be painting maybe together with me. But then we can talk about collaboration as well. So I think it will be a nice thing. Okay, more than 50 people and you will do it, right? Anthony! Yes! Yes! Oh, that's so great! <laughs> oh, yes, this is very playful. And with these ones, I can also, um, well, give the painting or pages a kind of movement. Like, if I do another one here, and another one here and another one there it will be in a direction from the left the upper left to here to the right page i think that will be nice so it's looking like a party that's very nice. This is the one that I grabbed out of the dry already uh, in the face, the dried ones in the face. So I hope this will be fine. You see that the canvas paper is a bit wobbly. But I think when, as soon as I close the book, it will be all okay. And so I could press it gently and then see what's happening. I think this one is nice, but I wanted to have, I want to have it underneath this. So I will try if I can still remove it a bit. Mm, this is enough. And then I will remove this thicker part. So these flowers have been drained for two, at least a month. So I think they won't be changing color very much, but the time time will tell if that's the truth. Um It's going underneath. I never created 
a spread with so many flowers in it. These are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven flowers and one spread. It's time to pluck new ones, I think. And I will do another one here. And I think that I could do much more on this page. But I also think this could be enough. I like it when the stalk is a bit like this. It's also giving you kind of a dire direction where it's coming from. This one has got no stalk. I could even connect them with kind of threads, but I think this movement is enough for this page. Um, I will cover it a bit with gel medium so it will well the chance is larger than that it will stay this color I think this could be a great Thing to work out a little more for it, for example, um, a um, Durant ink dance pen. And here I could create some patterns, but this is still wet, so I don't want to touch it anymore. If I will do something, because now I don't know if I continue working on this page or I haven't decided if it's finished or not, but when I um, when I will finish it, uh, I will show you, of course, the results. For now, I think it's a very nice page. If I go back to my page that I created earlier for a tutorial on YouTube, I will add the video uh, in, in the end screen. You can see that I added two more things on this page. And I even don't know if it's finished yet, but... This woman is shining and she is reaching out to a four leaf clover. So here I did kind of the same thing as here. Uh, I used, well, plants, a very rare one, but I think that four leaf clovers can be plucked always so also when it's when i discover something else i can do on this page i definitely share that with you so i hope you like this tutorial and please let me know your answer to the hidden question in this video and if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel give the video a thumbs up and turn on the notification bell so you won't miss a thing i see you next time bye bye